Today is Halloween, so I decided that I will teach you how to summon and then banish some creatures. And we will be talking about those creatures and summoning them in the context of a pattern, a design pattern called singleton, which is something which you shouldn't use, uh, but we will use this in our entire app. Just joking. We will use it just a little bit. I will explain what's the fuss about this pattern, why all people say that you shouldn't use singleton, what are the downsides of using it, and what are the upsides, why we are deciding right now to use this pattern in our application. But as always, we will take it slowly, so we will just um, do a tiny bit. We won't do it in, a, in its fullest. Because programming is about this, at least for me, about this iterative approach. So we will just improve our solution. So it won't be perfect. And that's the just um, a note for more advanced people listening to this uh, video, that the things will be improved in the future. But for now, we will just start with something small, something easy to understand, and then we will build on this as we progress. So let's jump into the code. I think we won't be running anything today, but I will leave this simulator uh, running anyway. So we will be working on this overseer and we will be uh, transforming this from a, a regular object into a singleton. So this singleton pattern was first mentioned in a book called Design Patterns, which is also referred as the the Gang of Four book. So I was talking about this book, I think, in this course or maybe in one of my vlogs. But if you are doing uh, computer science studies, this is usually a, a must read. You have to read all those patterns. You have to go through all those patterns and probably discuss them. Um, but some patterns are more useful than others. And as I was explaining in some other video, some patterns are only applicable to certain types of languages. This book, if I remember correctly, was being written in, um, in Smalltalk and, and Java in mind. And for example, if you apply some of those patterns to languages like uh, Python or JavaScript or Dart, it's, it's somehow different. So having said that, this is a, a classic uh, in computer science. It's a good thing to know this book and to read it. Uh, usually you don't read it from you know a to z from the first page to the last you just read a particular pattern and if, if you decide to read it and i encourage you to read this book just read you know by pattern select a pattern from somewhere in the middle and learn about this pattern and then maybe search on the internet and then try to go through all those patterns in, the, in this book and see how they word things and how they explain things uh, to have this bigger picture. So that's the classic, but there is also a book which I find uh, pretty interesting, which somehow reiterates patterns, and it's, it's called Game Programming Patterns, but it's general enough, I think, that you, you will benefit from this as well, and it's a modern take on, uh, let's say, or like, um, like a reiteration, more and more, more modern reiteration and funny enough it's written by bob nystrom which is also one of the i think main people right now behind dart i'm not sure about this if, if correct me if i'm wrong but yeah funny enough uh he wrote in the past a book about design patterns so i encourage you to read it the web version is free but if you find it helpful you should probably uh, contribute you can buy it as well having said that let's see let's jump to the definition so singleton is this um, technique or this approach where you make sure that a class can produce only one instance and that you have access to this uh, instance from anywhere in your application you are creating an object and it's only one if you try to create another one, you will get the previous instance of that class, the previous object. So it, depend, it depends in which language uh, we are defining it. 
So there, there's just a very slight differences, but uh, it's all about this um, singularity, let's say, or uh, the fact that it's just a one instance. And everything that's cr it's created that in, in that instance, it's available to you and you can use it. And then additionally, you can access it from anywhere in your application. So it sounds pretty nice, but what's the problem and why people say you shouldn't use Singleton or you should it uh, sparingly, like uh, rarely? It's because it gives you a lot of power. So it's like, uh, you know, imagine a spoiled child with a lot of money. Someone like a Joffrey, for example, from Game of Thrones. So it, it's, uh, it's something which it's, it's difficult to control. And what I mean by that? It's about being able to access this from anywhere. So it's a global entity. It's a gr global variable. Although it's a class, although it's an object, it's actually just a global variable. And global variable should be avoided because we, if there are different, let's say, entities in your application that access that, you, you, you don't really control that and you can, you can easily lose the track of what happens with that variable. So that's the first problem. The, the fact that it's available from anywhere, you don't really know what happens with that. So you don't contain that. In programming, it's always better to limit something, you know. If Joffrey had more limits, more people around him could limit him, maybe he would become a good, a good leader, maybe. But that's just one of the, one of the problems with Singleton. The, the second problem is that it's difficult to test this entity. Because if you have just one instance, if you technically create one instance, you cannot replace it with something else. Because in, in testing, it's all about, uh, you know, mocking certain things. So if you test one thing, you try to do it in isolation, and then the other things that this thing communicates with, uh, you mock them just to simplify your, your testing, you know, to limit your variables, let's say, to limit your interactions. And if you have singleton, you cannot really replace that. So it's kind of difficult to... So it, it poses some problems. And these are not like a very big problems. And I, we will see later, I hope, how we can avoid certain of those problems and how we can restructure uh, this pattern in a way that certain problems won't be that difficult to... will become easier to manage, simply put. But what's important about Singleton, this pattern, is that you should use it rarely. And that's a good advice in contrast to the title of this video. Really think if you need this and based on that, decide what's the best approach. Because object-oriented programming is more about objects than about you know, single entities or global variables. This is also something which depends on the programming language. In certain programming languages, it's more true than in the others. But in our case, it's just um, what I want to transfer. What I want to explain is that object-oriented programming should be more about, you know, local interactions with objects and not about those entities which are somehow global to all your application and can access any part and can be accessed from any part because this will trouble everything. It's like this unlimited control and it's difficult to uh, deal with. But anyway, today we will implement a singleton in our, in our application. And the reason is that it will simplify certain things. So we will just use one singleton in our call application and it will be, I would say, very small singleton. As you remember from the other videos, I was trying to explain the, the whole ar architecture in this application, which I call Sprinkle, you know, as an analogy to a garden. And we have uh, plants, which are the widgets in our applications, and they are uh, filled with water. In our case, these are streams. So streams send data to widgets so that the widgets can change, the same as flowers can grow because of the water. And in, gar in large gardens, there are usually people who work there. So we have those people as well. These are managers. And each manager is responsible for a part of the garden. And then there's this top person, this overseer, which hires and uh, releases those or 
this person is letting go of managers if they are not needed. And we will apply the singleton pattern to this overseer because in the garden, there is usually one overseer, uh, one top person, one um, the ultimate manager who manages all. So this somehow, you know, fits our analogy in this case. But this, it will also help us to access certain managers in certain places when we'll be talking about the resource management in the next episodes, which is a very important topic, but we neglected it uh, so far. So let's try to implement, let's try to convert this overseer into a singleton. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of the constructor. So as you remember, this overseer is being instantiated here at the top level in the main dart. So we are injecting it into provider so that we can access it later from our um, widgets. And this is the way to access those managers. So it may seem a little bit cumbersome, difficult, because we have to get the context and then fetch and then use provider. So it's like a long way of accessing that. But what's important about this approach is that it limits us. It just says that we can uh, access those uh, managers only inside the build methods. So in this case, this is a special case of the uh, search delegate. The idea is that we can access the managers, we can ask for a manager anywhere where we have the context. That's a, that's a good thing. We are limiting the, the possibilities. Uh, you cannot get manager somewhere else. But as, you will, as we will see in the next episodes, uh, sometimes you may need managers in, a, in other places as well. And that's the reason we are creating this ability to access them somewhere else. A special case to dispose of certain resources or to, to make it more optimal. So we need to remove this constructor. And there is another problem in this constructor that once this is instantiated, we were registering those instances. So those instances were created once um, and they were created at the same time at the beginning. So it's a not, not a good idea. It would be better to defer, to wait till the instance is needed in order to create it. And we will, we will implement that in a moment. So let's remove this uh, from the, this constructor and let's create another constructor. And as you, as you know, in Dart, in Flutter, you can create named uh, constructor. So for example, I can create a named constructor like that and I can do something. So I can, I can do certain things here. So instead of using just a, a constructor like this, I can give it a name and then invoke it. So we will use that uh, feature and but we will call this internal. Like that, it's accessible from the outside of this class, but we want to hide this constructor. So we will prefix it with the underscore. So now this constructor is not available from the outside of this class, which means, funny enough, that this constructor cannot be invoked from the outside. So how to invoke it? So we will create a final static uh, field called instance or let's maybe call it singleton. And here we will invoke our internal, our internal constructor. So we need to change the order so it's static final. This means that we just created a constructor of this class and this constructor is invoked from within because of the static field, singleton. And now we have to make sure that whenever someone calls overseer uh, like this, which means invoke uh, the constructor, which is just a shortcut for new overseer, we just want to return this uh, singleton. There's a syntax for that in Dart. And we can just say factory overseer. And whenever someone invokes this constructor, the default constructor, just return the singleton. So now, whenever you are calling the constructor, you will always have the same instance, one instance, and we can call it from anywhere in our application. 
So for example, if we uh, go here in the build, we can now say overseer. And if we import this, it should work without the problem. So it's, it's a build method, but we can also go somewhere else. So we can even access it in the, in the, in the manager. So let's go here, submit method of a manager, and we can say overseer, right? And it can be accessed in a manager, which doesn't make uh, sense. And that's the problem with Singleton. Now it's this instance will be, uh, we will have just one instance and available anywhere in our application, even in the places where it doesn't make sense. Nothing prevents that, which is kind of a problem. So now we have a, our overseer and I will stop this because it's already a longer a video. And in the next one, we will see how to further uh, transform our overseer into uh, a proper one, a one that uses the singleton and does those additional things as summoning and banishing managers. That's all for today. See you in the next one.